size six. What's up guys? You know, uh, I go out of my way to avoid like po politics, any anything political, uh, current hot button issues within society, you know, because I don't like getting people all riled up. There's enough of that going on anyway, people getting riled up. I mean, you just go on the internet, check your email and you see all this crap about how terrible the world is, everything's coming to an end, etc., etc., and blah, blah, blah. Just get you angry, you know, and, and I'm in Virginia, you know, as a Virginian, you've seen a lot about some of the stuff they're teaching in our public schools and how it's affecting our kids, and I've intentionally stayed away from that crap. Uh, it's a hot button issue, you know, you got our new governor, Governor Yunkin, saying, oh, you don't have to wear masks anymore, and then you have the teachers union saying yeah you do and then the supreme court's getting involved it's just such a mess and i have done my best to stay out of it but i have certain responsibilities as a social media influencer i guess is the term once you get a certain size and we got there some time ago and as a parent just this kind of mixes this goes together and i've got to bring this up my kid brought home an assignment from school and I'm going to share it with you because if they're teaching my kid this in a public school system they're probably teaching your kid this in a public school system too okay all any of us try to do is do the best we can for our families right keep a roof over their head make sure there's food on the table go out there and get that extra job at times when we have to I mean that's what men do and that's what women who are real women do that's what people you know who, who are, are willing to buck up and meet their obligations and responsibilities do right so you do this you do this just trying to give your kid the best life you can give them and then oh my gosh you know you got to worry about you got to worry about uh the indoctrination the inundation the inundation of just stupid stuff they put in their heads uh it, I'll tell you this when I'm going to get on to it. I'm going to show you this assignment, share it with you. This has got me really livid. Okay, just there's no other word for it, livid. There's probably lots of other words for it, but that's the one I'm going to choose to use, livid. Okay, uh, because it just starts here at this level. Then it continues through college, and then you see these kids come out or these young adults graduate from college, and they're so unprepared for the real world because their minds have been filled with fluff and, and crap. Uh life's fair or it's supposed to be and it is supposed to be but it's not or uh you know money money's not important yeah if you have it uh you know so how you make it whatever listen I, you might not have heard this so i'm going to tell you this that i'm getting straight to this crazy lesson my kid brought home um uh, you know this uh girl goes through the public school system does really well you know her father is a small business owner her mother is as well helps father she's got her own side gig they do their best to raise this girl they're trying to teach her about you know how to manage money uh the responsibilities of being a small business owner understanding you better run your business or your business will run you and if it is to be it's up to me don't expect to succeed because everything works out for you and it all comes through you're going to lose sleep at night you're going to do this go without that uh so they do their best to instill this in this young lady and she's like uh-huh uh-huh but then every time she goes to school and she's hearing something else so oh, you should you know never whatever then she goes off to college and it only gets worse right and this was her parents fear uh she comes home for thanksgiving break and she pretty much confirms their worst fears uh uh, now, mind you, uh, her parents helped her move in. They were there. They they met her roommate, and they really liked her roommate. She was a real sweet girl. Looked like she was going to go places in life herself, like they were hoping for their daughter. And so when the daughter's home for Thanksgiving, she's just telling her dad, you know, this successful small business owner and her mother, who when this girl was in diapers and can't remember, they were going without food so that she could eat. But, you know, they'd gotten comfortable now by the time she was in college and a, a young adult. But she comes home and she's just telling him, you know, Dad, uh, I've really seen 
I'm starting to see the world even more differently th than than I did before I went off to college, and I've kind of got some quarrels with you. And uh, he said, well, what are they, honey? And she says, you know, number one, I think you're greedy. And he had never heard this before. And he says, well, I'm greedy. In what way am I greedy? And she says, well, you know, I mean, I know things used to be a lot simpler and we used to be a lot more humble, but you've grown your business, you've succeeded. And, you know, the last few years, you've gone out and gotten nicer cars and uh, you've had some improvements done here on the house. I know it's made us more comfortable, but is that really necessary? I mean, there's so many people out there starving. There's so many people without work. Uh, there's so many people that are less fortunate. Instead of buying that nicer model car or that newer model car, shouldn't you just continue to buy old beaters and take that extra money and, and give it to someone else who has less and help them out? And a dad's like, oh my gosh, oh, this is my worst. You know, he's not saying this, but he's thinking my worst fear has come to fruition. She's gone off, you know, to college and she's being taught this stuff. And he looks back and he says, well, you know, it really kind of started in so many ways in the public schools. I wish I would have caught it. And uh, and then she starts going on and on about how, you know, he, he, her father is always complaining about taxes because he pays more money every year in taxes than the average household in America earns in a year. And uh, the daughter's like, you know, Dad, you're always running your mouth about that, but I know how much you make. You should have to pay all those taxes. As a matter of fact, you should have to pay more than that. And uh, the, the dad's thinking, oh, my God, here we go. She's in that, you know punish the successful mentality. Everybody wants to forget when those small business owners were going without and people, their own family was even writing them off as dead because they were like, what, you, you just don't want to work. Why are you doing that? That's stupid. Forgets that part. You know, the daughter's just seeing where they're at now, you know? <sighs> Should pay more taxes. Should, you know, not go out and buy that nicer car that mom and dad has worked so hard to buy. They should keep buying them old crap beaters and give that money to somebody less fortunate. So the dad says, you know, how's that roommate of yours doing? I really liked her. Is she doing okay? And the girl says, ah, she's, she's all right. She's not doing that good in school though. And actually they're gonna, they're talking to her. They're telling her she shouldn't come back uh, next semester because her grades are so low. They said, well, well, well how, what are her grades? And they're like, she's got like a 2.0 or something. You know, uh, it's like a D average and she's probably gonna fail out in the, in the, uh, the dad says, well, why? why? She seemed like a smart girl. She seemed like a bright girl. Why would she have such poor grades? And, and, and the, the daughter says, you know, dad, she really is smart. She's one of the smartest people I've ever met, but she's very irresponsible. She lacks work ethic in regard to her academic work, her education. She skips class. She never studies. Uh, she really has, her, her new discovered interest is guys. Uh, and, and she says, I hate it for her because she's a wonderful person. She just doesn't have her priorities straight. And uh, the dad says, well, well you, I hope you're not going out and running around with her and partying like that yourself. And she's like, of course not. You don't got to worry about me. I'm studying. I'm working hard. I got a 4.0. And the dad says, you know, I got an idea. Got an idea. You got a 4.0 and she's got a 2.0. And they're going to ask her not to come back next semester. She says, yeah. She goes, or the dad says, how about... You go talk to the dean and you like give her one of your points. You'll still have a 3.0, which is a B average. You'll bring her up to a 3.0, which is a B average. She'll get to come back to school next semester. Her problems will be solved and you can take credit for having helped her. Well, of course, the daughter doesn't want anything to do with that. The daughter's like, why would I do that? I'm the one that worked hard for that 4.0. I'm the one who chose not to go partying with those cute guys. I'm the one that chose to go to class, even in the mornings when I was tired, wanted to stay in bed. Or maybe sometimes I didn't feel that great, but I went to, went to class anyway. I hate reading textbooks, but I do it because I know I need to know the information for the test. I've done these things to get my 4.0. She hasn't. I'm not giving her any of my grade point average. Okay, if you haven't heard that, uh, I'm glad you finally heard it because pretty much this is what the girl was telling her dad, right? But it starts even before that. So I've got a son, he's in the public school. He's brought home, you know, a homework assignment. Well, it wasn't a homework assignment, they did it in class. Uh, and it, it really has me livid. Uh, I work very hard to provide for my son, to make sure his needs are met, to send him to this nice school. I had to work my ass off to be able to afford to live in this zip code. 
okay, went from being down and out in a third world country on an expired visa with no way home to seeing that kid thinking, this ain't what I want for him, getting him over here, getting him into school. And, you know, I did it by, you know, over time, finally becoming successful on social media. And now he's going there and they're teaching him this. <sighs> Will you look at this? Avoiding clickbait. Can you believe this? Use the clues below to identify which examples are clickbait, where the main purpose is to get you to click. Clue number one. It seems impossible or unbelievable. For example, he discovers the lair of Bigfoot Sasquatch and it's made loud and clear that he is not welcome. What is so unbelievable about that? So some dude, wouldn't you imagine if you went out and discovered the lair of Bigfoot Sasquatch, don't you think him, her, it, or they would let you know you weren't welcome there either? That's not called, hey, this is the public lair. This is the lair for all upright walking bipedal creatures. No, it's the lair of Bigfoot Sasquatch. That's not clickbait. Seriously, look, I, this is an honest-to-God work assignment in the public schools here in Virginia. <sighs> Clue number two. They got three clues to identify clickbait. They're teaching this stuff to our kids in the public schools. Number three. It tries to shock you. It tries to shock you. For example, he places a camera in the wood pile, and that's when things get creepy. Man, that wood pile back there is pretty creepy. I could imagine placing a placing a camera in that wood pile, and then things just getting creepy. It happens. It happens around here all the time. How is that? Was he? How does? How is that so shocking? Number three. Hmm. It refers to a celebrity or popular topic. Like, example, this parent, this public school parent is irate. And when you see what they're teaching our kids in schools, you will be too. Why is that click? Look at this. Avoiding clickbait. This is an actual assignment being taught. So how would that, how would that be clickbait based upon you know, being as popular topic, what's being taught in our public schools, especially in Virginia, and the fight between the governor and the student or the teachers' unions and the Supreme Court and all. But, but somehow that's clickbait. It might be time for us to homeschool.